Back here at City Field, we're in the eighth with one man out. John Chambi alongside Chris Singleton here in the booth. And next for the Mets, Luis Guillorme for the fourth time tonight. You know, this is kind of a tough matchup as a left-handed hitter facing a left-handed pitcher. What you tell yourself is I want to stay square to the plate, try to hit the ball over the shortstop's head. On the corner for a strike. Strike one. Bullpen action for the Giants for the first time. Zach Littell getting ready to go. Leon getting loose as well. Base is loaded. One away. Swing and a miss. And it's nothing in two. He's looking for a ground ball to get a double play and out of this jam. Two. One ball, two strikes again. Stays alive. Next pitch has popped up. Gathers and throws to first. But the runner scores from third. Thought they had a shot at him at the plate. The first base. Hmm. And the batter now, Pete Alonso, one for three. He's not going to get cheated up there. No, he's not. He's looking to do damage with every swing he takes. looking for some insurance or as our friends down in the south would say insurance no matter how bit of strategy here they issue the intentional walk and that'll set up a force play at any base these fans don't like to see that because they showed up to watch him swing the bat but this team does not want to let him beat him the pitch canna stands in now and lets that one go for a strike Next pitch is outside. It's getting squeezed a little bit here late. McCann at third. Marte over at second. Alonso at first. Two out of the inning. Got him. Good job of damage control right there. Through eight full, it's the Mets two and the Giants one. Back here in Queens, now the left fielder, Jock Peterson. So they turn to Edwin Diaz out of the pen. And he'll feature a hard slider to work off his fastball. The pitch. Foul ball there. Line drive. Pulls up and it drops for a hit. Well, a big swing of the bat right there. Solid swing from start to end. On time with everything. Really good balance. Nice extension. And he met it out front for the line drive knock. Now a huge at bat in this game coming up. Croft batting now as that one almost finds the mark. It's a ball. And now it's even up. If you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get in the scoring position. Swing and a miss. And yeah, a count one and two. Cut out and missed. Struck him out. And one gone. 
Well, that's always the key to effective pitching is getting ahead in the count. And as a pitcher, it really allows you to start expanding the zone. Guys become defensive, and all of a sudden, for the hitter, that plate starts to get really wide. But what happens is, because of the pressure, you end up committing to a pitch as a batter before you recognize what it is, and that's what leads to the strikeout. And he deals. Rough. Takes one off the outside here. Home plate umpires trying to tighten things up a little bit. Next offering is in for a strike. Righty delivers. That's a strike. And a swing and a miss. And two away now. Well, interesting. He's looking very comfortable out of the stretch after giving up the leadoff single. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. So they haven't been able to move that runner up, get him into scoring position, and try to have a better chance of scoring. I tell you, good job so far on the mound. He just needs one more out. This is Joey Bart. Taken high in the draft. He's had that top prospect labeled over him since he put on a professional uniform. But at some point, that starts to go away, and you've got to produce at the big league level. You'll won. Typically, the outfield defense will play a little bit deeper just to keep the ball in front, make sure that runner on first doesn't come all the way around the score and tie this ball game up. Swing and a ground ball out to short. On to first, ball game. And the Mets hold on to win a tight one as this one ends as a one-run ball game. Back here at the ballpark, welcome in John Shambi and Chris Singleton. We've got one out here in inning number seven. The Mets have had an outstanding start to the season. Only a few weeks in, but so far they're every bit as good as expected, Singy. We've got the opportunity to just see how confident this ball club is, and everyone knew coming in they were going to be a good team, and sometimes teams can struggle under those lofty expectations, but not these guys so far. You can see the swagger, and on top of it, they're producing the results to back it up. And the pitch. Eddie in the box now. Takes a cold strike. A swing and a soft liner. Could be extra bases. Not in time. He's safe. Runner holds it third, so just one across on the play. Picks himself up in RBI. With the way defenders track down balls these days, I mean, both from the infield and in the outfield, there really aren't a lot of base hits on balls hit like that. But there's always a little room back behind the first and second baseman to drop a long dart in there, and he found a way. There's Dickerson now. Here comes the skipper, and we're going to see a pitching change in this spot. That's it for Chris Bassett, and as he heads for the dugout, we'll take a quick break. New arm on the mound when we get back. Now on the bump, Drew Smith comes in with runners at second and third. calling for the intentional walk and that loads up the bases and the force play is now in order here's Paul Goldschmidt he's hitting for that pop came out of the gates really strong and the pitch bunts it but he can't keep it fair looked like the safety squeeze there and while it's still early we're definitely getting glimpses of just how good they can be 
And I think ultimately you want to tie him up, get the ball in on the plate so that he can't get the barrel to it and hit it to the outfield. And a swing and a miss. Huge strikeout there. Here's Nolan Arenado. If you don't get ahead in the count, you can forget about having any success against him. The pitch. Base hit. One run is in. The tag, and that's out number three, inning over. Eighth inning coming up. It's the Cardinals four and the Mets two. We're at the top of the eighth. Now it's the second baseman, Jeff McNeil. The why to kick the pitch. And there's a ball. Well, after putting up a nice inning on offense, got some runs across, this is where you look for the starter to go out there, have a shutdown inning. Don't give that other team any hope. Uh, you just hope that he can get through this inning, get the bats back up there while they're hot. Action in the St. Louis bullpen. Giovanni Gallegos, the closer, getting cranked up for a possible save opportunity. Helsley warming up as well. And misses inside. It's getting squeezed a little bit here late. Two one pitches in there, and the count is even. Lined in the left center, base hit. I'll tell you, man, it's such a good feeling when you smoke a line drive into the gap like that. I mean, sure, home runs are king, but I feel like nothing makes you feel like a true professional hitter more than a bolt the other way. Now a huge at bat in this game coming up. Here comes the manager out of the Cardinals dugout, and he'll make a move to the pen. Miles Michaelis out of the game. Two-run ball game as he heads for the dugout, and we'll be back with a new pitcher. On the mound now, Jordan Hicks. And he'll work on holding this lead. Number 12, Jordan Hicks. James McCann in now. Here's a guy who's been struggling so far this year. It's only late April, but still hoping he'll turn it around soon. And a pitch. Good eye right there. Now this guy's definitely looking for a big swing of the bat right here. Try to close that gap. But, you know, at the very least, if you could find a way to manufacture that run from first, it feels like it's really important to getting back into this ballgame. McNeil gets his lead at first. Nobody out. The 2-0 is in for a strike. That's a great take right there. Even though it's a strike, with the situation, runner on first base, you want to keep the ball off the ground. And you swing at that pitch, most likely you roll into a double play. Next offering clips the zone count, even at two. Really good cutter that he's able to front door and back door. That pitch is devastating. At the belt and fires. And that one fouled off. Definitely got the hitter conscious of the pitch inside. Really think the outer half is open. Comes the 2-2. Oh, cool. on this count, runner not known for his speed, but I think you got to put him in motion. Try to avoid a double play here, Boo. Here comes the pitch. There goes the runner from first. Swing and a miss. Puts the tag on him, and it's a double play. I think on that one right there, they were just trying to stay out of the double play. Guy at the dish isn't very fast, so anything on the ground in the infield is most likely going to be a double play. So you can't fault the team for trying to force the issue. Make sure that they create an opportunity here to score a run in this inning. The pitch. Nimmo stands in with two away as he takes the ball right there. Kicks and deals. And it is two and one. In the air, right field. Racing makes the catch. And that is that. Back here at Bush Stadium. And now the catcher comes up to him. Yadier Molina. Here comes a pitch. And there's a foul ball. And the righty deals. 
Hammered down the line. Could be extra bases. Now he'll turn for second. He's in there. A little more back spin on that instead of the top spin. He's jogging around the bases rather than pulling up at second. And now Bader up to the plate. He's already homer here in this one. And the right hander back to work. And first offering is fouled off. Runner at second, nobody out. Next offering is in for a strike. Well, you can't expect to get a great pitch to hit with an open base and a runner on second. He's going to have to really tighten up his sights here, make sure that he can barrel up the ball. Ground ball up the middle. One gone to the bottom of the eighth. Now it's Paul DeYoung up to the plate. And he's already singled in this game. And this is a big opportunity for him to pick up his teammate right here. This one popped up. Canna moving under it. That's out number two. Two gone. As he doesn't tag, it stays at third. Now batting. Right this is Dylan Carlson. Dylan. One for two. And the pitch. And a strike. Swing and a ground ball to Bill. That's a base hit. In comes the runner from third, and they lead by three. Well done. Drives in the run. Really nice job staying up the middle with his approach. He didn't try to do too much with the pitch. Just shot it through the infield. Lars Newtbaugh next up for the Cardinals for the fourth time tonight. And he grounds one to the right side. They take the force out, and that is the third out of the inning. So one run in the inning on this base hit. Last chance coming up here for the Mets. Oh, man. Uh, 100 bands, 100 bands. Raw paper, saw gas. Now I'm getting to the bay. And now they turn to Giovanni Gallegos, trying to protect this lead. Number 65, Giovanni. And welcome back. New inning getting started. And stepping in for New York, Starling Marte. The Mets in striking distance, but have some work to do. Boog, it starts with the leadoff man. I need a good at bat out of him right here. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Right-hander kicks, deals. There's a strike. Big at bat right here. He did the team thing. Took until he got a strike. Now he's got to go to work, shorten up that swing a little bit, do whatever it takes to get on base. And foul ball. Some real good life going through the zone on that one. And now it's one and two. Out to short. And they get the leadoff man in the ninth. Here's Francisco Lindor. He's already homered in this game. You talk about elite defensive players, especially in the middle of the diamond. And this guy is at the top of the list. And he deals. There's a strike, and you played behind guys, and they love having your speed out there defensively. One of the things that we talk about is how much pitchers enjoy having those elite defenders behind them. Next pitch misses, and one and one. One down, base is empty. And that one ripped to left. Newt Bar right there to make the grab. Two down. Now the first baseman, JD. Now it's JD Davis. Gallegos back to work. And a good fastball to start him off. 
That's strike one. In the on-deck circle, you really want to use that opportunity to see some pitches and time up the fastball. Last thing you want to do is miss a good, hittable fastball early in the count. Next pitch is popped up. Throw to first. Ball game. And the Cardinals make it six straight victories. They take the loss here, but it's still been a great start to the season. Yeah, no question. I mean, they're still in the front of the pack. And this is a setback, but they're still in a terrific position. Welcome in, everybody. Glad you're with us. Triple-A action coming at you on the show. It's the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs taking on the Syracuse Mets. Along with my partner, Chris Singleton, I'm John Shami. Down in the minor leagues for this one, and the front office has its eyes on one particular prospect, Singy. They've sent some evaluators down to get a closer look, see if he can help the big club soon. And, Boog, a prospect that comes up and performs right away is so valuable because teams that try to add a spark in the middle of the year, they've usually got to give up some young talent and a trade to do so. So if you can promote from get a similar impact that's a huge benefit for the front office so really interested to see how he plays today okay all set to go now it's the shortstop Nick Maton the wine and the pitch out there to center puts the squeeze on that one and there's one away Bottom of the first. Khalil Lee gets a chance to hit. The wind of the pitch. Out towards left center. Steven makes the grab. One pitch and one out. So two down. Here's the catcher, Rafael Marchand. It's been such a good hitter with runners in scoring position. Some guys just take it to another level. For him right now at the plate, it's like everyone else is in slow motion and he's in full speed. This looks like extra bases. In to score, Torres. Rounds third, headed for the plate. Now two runs are in. Here comes the third. He's in there. Three runs score. And they're up by three. The old three-pointer. Big swing of the bat to score. Now here is Khalil Lee. The pitch. Swing and a ball lifted left field. That'll drop in as he plays it on a hop. They get it in quickly. So first and second now one out. Now batting. The second baseman. Now the number two hitter, Travis Blankenhorn. Bazika at second, Lee at first, one gone. Step off, oh, he jumped early. Now safe at first, he gets back in. Kicks and fires. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. Now two away. Man, I really like the ability to bounce back right there after not getting the call. He probably should have got it. Didn't let it affect his focus. And he came back with another good pitch to get him swinging. 
to hear to be clear we put that first and second two down now here is Nick Plummer soft contact in the air and the inning is over And here's the catcher, Rafael Marchand. The catcher, number 13, Rafael Marchand. Riding to the plate. The other way. Can't get their base hit. And it gets by him. Now around second, going for third. His second knock of the night. Now batting the shortstop, Nick. Mayton. So up next, Got Nick Mayton. Marshawn stands at third with one gone in the inning. That one ripped. Drops in for a hit. Couldn't run it down. Runner from third comes across, and it's 4-0. Pulls into second. That's an RBI double. A little more backspin on that instead of the top spin. And he's jogging around the bases rather than pulling up at second. Bottom of the sixth inning, and now the center fielder, Khalil Lee. The pitch. There's a strike. He's been very consistent with his command out there on the mound, consistently throwing at the knees. Pretty impressive when a guy can repeat his delivery like this. And he shatters his bat on the ground at a shore. Over to first. There to beat him by an eyelash. The second base. And now the shortstop, Nick Maton. Now batting the shortstop, Nick Maton. Out towards center. Lee makes the catch, and that'll do it. So the lineup flips over. Here's the center fielder, Khalil Lee. And the pitch. That one inside, and it's one to know. See it, drive it like you can. Come on. Next offering is in for a strike. Bazika leads off first with one away. This one lifted in the air, left field. Steven brings it in, two away now. Back here in Philadelphia. Welcome if you just joined us. John Shambi and Chris Singleton as we've got two away in the night. Gene Segura at the plate here. And there's no doubt that they'll feed off the energy from this crowd, right? I mean, yeah, I'd say the intensity level has gone up a few notches for sure. And that one is lifted in the air. 
He puts it away, and that'll do it. The Mets bounce back from consecutive losses to take game three of the series. Welcome from the home of the Mets, City Field in Queens, New York, Interleague Baseball on MLB The Show. It's the Seattle Mariners going up against the New York Mets. With my partner, Chris Singleton, I'm John Shambi. Well, a fun souvenir in this one, Singy. Starling Marte, honored with this game's bobblehead giveaway. Man, Boog, I always wanted a bobblehead of my own. I guess I just wasn't good enough, man. So I'm going to be honest and say I'm a little jealous of him. So one out, nobody on. Starling Marte now at the plate. And a pitch. There's the strike. Next offering is in for a strike. Well, he's gotten ahead with two pitches down in the zone. He has plenty of options right here. He can go up, he can go away, he can add velocity, he can subtract. Frazier pulls that one down, and there's two away. Starling Marte up to him. The right-hander back to work. That's in there, and it's 0-1. Nimmo aboard here at first with nobody out. In the air to left center, Rodriguez on the move to the right. Makes the grab one away. Now batting. Welcome back. And now the center fielder, Julio Rodriguez. Leading off for Seattle, the center fielder. And here it comes. Fly ball to right. Grabs it on the run. One down. Well, on the mound, very efficient. Able to produce an outcome, it seems like, within the third or fourth pitch of just about every at bat. Bottom of the inning, and stepping in for New York, Starling Marte. Flexing back to work. Starling. And takes low for ball one. That's where you want it. It's a good miss. Foul ball. The wind of the pitch. And now one and two. And it's even up. Two balls, two strikes. Make your pitch up there, huh? On the ground to third. On to France. And that's the first out in the bottom of the fifth. Here's Jesse Winker. Oh, and two now. There's a swing and a drive. Pulls it in on the warning track. So two away with nobody on. Now batting Mitch Hanniger. That one out to right. That drops in, plays it on a hop. 
and it gets by him. They're still chasing it as he rounds second. Haniger doesn't stop, heads for home. Puts the tag on him, leaving the box, and that's the third out. Always exciting to see a play at the plate. Trying to score with two outs, but the tag just gets him in time, and they cut down the run to end the inning. Here in Queens, bottom of the seventh. Here's Starling Marte. The pitch. Just off the outside part of the plate. Next pitch is outside. Swings through that one out in front that time. Strike two. The pitch. And it's filled up. He should get a pretty good pitch to hit here with three-hole hitter coming up if he's walked. Righty delivers. And that's ball four. Well, a breaking ball in that 3-2 count kind of tells you that that's the pitch he has the most confidence in right now. Just couldn't find the strike zone. And now it's Frankie Lindor. And a pitch. Swing and a tapper. And one away in the bottom of the seventh. Here's Pete Alonso. He's been such a good hitter with runners in scoring position. Some guys just take it to another level. For him right now at the plate, it's like everyone else is in slow motion and he's in full speed. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. Now two out. Well, he didn't get the call on the mound the pitch before. Felt like he should have had him look it, I think. But, you know, that's good composure right there. He found a way to come back with another good pitch to get him to swing and miss. Man, it's second. And that one handled. On to France. And that is that. We look ahead to inning number eight. It's the Mets six and the Mariners three. He's two outs away. Next to hit, Mitch Hanniger. Right side, Marte. Has this one sized up? Pulls it down, and there's two gone. You hate to see it. Starling Marte wasn't able to do much at the dish in this one. Yeah, I know he didn't, Boog, and it gets back to what we talked about earlier. I think it's so important that he's a contributor to this team's success as the season progresses, and we didn't see it tonight, but, you know, he's got so much to offer, so we'll look for him to bring it more as we move forward. And welcome back. With Chris Singleton, I'm John Chomby. Thanks for joining us. Nobody out here in inning number eight. 
the Mets look pretty solid about a third of the way into the season. And singing, that's about what we expected. They look as good as they were projected to be. Yeah, they look pretty strong so far. They haven't blown the doors off, but they're putting themselves in a pretty good position to contend. No outs, runner at first. And here is Harrison Bader. This is what stat nerds like myself might call a high leverage situation. Yeah, but I'm not sure what the numbers say, but clearly an at bat that could change the course of this game dramatically. So if they want to make their run to the postseason a little easier, though, I think they need to turn it up over the next month, really push to the All-Star break. Popped in the air. Left field. Canna settles underneath it. Makes the catch. One down. Now Molina at the plate. Definitely wants to stay out of the double play here. Ball on the ground in the infield. Should be an inning ending double play. There's a strike. Your base runner. You've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get in the scoring position. Feed to second, that's one. Double play. They can't seem to break through. Inning over. Well, the second baseman made that one look easy. Great feed to the shortstop. The shortstop completes the play. They get out of a jam, and they end the inning. New pitcher for the Cardinals, Ryan Helsley. And this guy can bring it velocity-wise. On to the bottom of the eighth, and now the right fielder, Starling Marte. And he deals. Fought off foul. Next offering is in for a strike. No need to offer at that pitch until you get to two strikes. It's just a low percentage of success when you want to try to go after that down and away pitch. Next offering way off the plate. Arenado. Marte retired. Up next to the net. Now up to hit Francisco Lindor. One for three. You talk about elite defensive players, especially in the middle of the diamond, and this guy is at the top of the list. In the air, right field. Makes a nice grab at a full sprint. And there's two down. Up next to the net. The first baseman. Now it's going to be J.D. Davis for the fourth time tonight. Helsley back to work. That's a bullet, but it goes foul. The pitch. That one off the mark. One ball, one strike. Movement in the bullpen for the Cardinals. Cody Whitley up and loosening in the pen. McFarland, the lefty, warming up as well. Two outs. Oh, now this is blasted. Way back there. On its way. Gone. J.D. Davis goes deep. His fourth home run of the season. It's 2-0. home runs where you really don't know if he got enough of it off the bat. I mean, he put a good swing on it clearly, but I wouldn't say he really got the sweet spot on the bat. The X and B law wasn't anything too impressive, but it had all it needed for him to circle the pillows. Here's Mark Canna. With the right hater back to work. No left fielder. Inside just missed. Canna. Two down, nobody on. Swing and a miss, and it's a ball to strike. Going to 
the count one and two. Well, pretty clear to me, he was trying to go deep right there, but you got to get a pitch that you can handle. Late swing fouled off. And a one two. That one ran inside, almost got him. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Here comes the pitch. On the ground, right side. Tosses to first, and that is the inning. The Mets do pick up a run on this solo blast. Last chance coming up here for the Cards. So they turn to Edwin Diaz out of the pen. Hasn't pitched in the last three days. Back here at City Field. Now it's the switch hitting outfielder, Dylan Carlson. The pitch. That one's in there. One one. The fastball at the bottom of the zone can be very effective. Just got to keep it on the corners. Wide drive. Makes the catch, and there's one gone. Back to the top of the lineup, and now it's the switch hitting second baseman, Tommy Edmond. He's someone that you might not describe as having elite level speed, but he can absolutely move, and it is a factor in his game. Canna makes the grab. Two away. And stepping in for the Cardinals, Edmundo Sosa. We talk about guys with good speed, and definitely he has it. But pushing the offense aside for just a second, Chris, it's the defensive side that I think the speed factors in the most. To the left side, but it is well foul. Well, he gets to balls that get by most people at that position. Just really impressive because there are certain times the ball comes... And a swing and a miss, and that is the ball game. Nice win for them as their strong season continues. Singy, are they a postseason front runner? Well, I don't want to call them a World Series favorites yet or anything like that, Bird, but they're playing great baseball so far, and they're at the front of the pack, so I think they have what it takes to keep it up. Live from beautiful Coors Field here in Denver, Colorado. Today, the finale of this three-game weekend set, it's the New York Mets going up against the Colorado Rockies. With my partner, Chris Singleton, I'm John Chomby. Jordan Yamamoto has torn up the minor leagues, and now we get to see this exciting arm at the top level. Yeah, and a lot of pitchers get that deer-in-the-headlights look when they get called up to the bigs, boo. I mean, the stadium is so much... Bottom of the first, Jose Iglesias gets a chance to hit now. Leading up for the Rockies. The pitch. Shot, Jose. There's a strike. That one the other way. Can't get there. Base hit. 
Well, the last 10 games or so have been anything but fun at the plate for him, so that one has to feel good. Anytime you rip a line drive the other way, you feel really good about what you did at the plate. You trusted your hands, you let the ball travel, and you took the barrel straight to it. That's great work right there. Now it's Charlie Blackman. In there, and it's 0-1. The 0 2. Right through there. Got him. Down on strikes. And he knew it. Well, that's not the best two strike fastball I've seen, but certainly got away with the location there. You know, sometimes as a hitter, when you're down in the count, you're so focused on a pitcher painting the black, and you just get a little bit locked up on something down the heart of the plate, not expecting it, and it just kind of freezes you. Here's Chris Bryant now. And that's in there for strike one. Comes up empty on the swing, 0-2 now. Iglesias, the runner at first with one gone in the inning. Roll it up on the ground. Let's and he'll two. And a swing and a miss. That's his second strikeout. Well, interesting. He's looking very comfortable out of the stretch after giving up the leadoff single. Back-to-back -back strikeout, so... They haven't been able to move that runner up, get him into scoring position, and try to have a better chance of scoring. I tell you, good job so far on the mound. He just needs one more out. And here is C.J. Crone. And the pitch. One, one. This ball's chopped on the ground. Tossed to Alonzo, and that's the inning. The Rockies strand one, scoreless after one. We head to the bottom of the second, and now Randall Gritchick. And a pitch. On the ground, right side. Throw pulls him off the bag, and he's safe. So digging in, Ryan McMahon. Hitless yesterday as they only pushed across one run. When you talk about elite defensive third baseman, this guy is at the top of the list. That one is absolutely belted. That's back. Bounces off the wall as he makes a great grab. Outstanding catch right there, and I love the commitment that he showed. He knew that the wall was close, but was determined to make that catch, and a nice calculation of just how much room he had to try to minimize that contact. Brendan Rodgers watches that one for a strike, standing in here with one down. Check swing, but he went too far. That is strike two. The next offering misses. Now one and two. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. That's the second out. Definitely made him chase a little bit out of the zone right there. I don't think that's a strike if he takes it. Pretty textbook pitching. Get ahead in the count. Get the guy in the box on his heels. And then force him to chase your pitch where he doesn't have much of a chance to do any damage. Now it's the power speed combo. Sam Hilliard. He was hitless in four at bats yesterday. And a foul ball. Nothing, nothing here in the bottom of the second. Next offering is in for a strike. That slider breaking in can be a tricky pitch. If you don't finish it and have that bite at the end and it stays out over the plate, it can get hit a long way. But that was a good one right there. To second, but way too late. Safe there. Left-hand hitter waits. Line, and that's a base hit. Runner around third. He'll score easily, and it's 1-0. Always feels good when you come through and get your team on the board first. Kind of a risky pitch coming inside with the breaking ball like that. You have to bury it. Otherwise, it's not too difficult to get the bat to it like he did that time. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. 
And now it's Dom Nunez. And a pitch. That one's in there. That's strike one. Next offering upstairs. One ball, one strike. Hilliard, the runner at first with two gone. Next pitch is inside, and that's ball two. That's where you want it. It's a good miss. On the ground to third. Escobar with the throw to first. Inning over. We play two full. It's the Rockies one, and the Mets nothing. Back here at Coors Field, ready to go for the last half of the inning. And now, Jose Iglesias. Going one. Next offering is fouled back. Going two now. Got him looking. And now one away. Here's Charlie Blackman. Two for nine so far in the series. Yamamoto back to work. Not even close there. And that's ball one. Nowadays with advanced metrics and aggressive defensive shifting, defense isn't necessarily just about making errors. Are you able to get to balls? Are you able to fill spots where guys hit the ball? Popped up to the left. Into foul ground. Escobar settles under it and makes the catch. Two up, two down. In an area that goes unnoticed is the coach that's responsible for positioning and then uh, the research person that's providing the information. So what we're seeing in baseball, so many more people behind the scenes that are contributing to the success between the lines. Brian looks at a strike. Second trip to the plate for him. Next pitch has popped up. He's got it. And that is out number three. Rockies are down quietly, but they still lead it 1-0. Back here at the ballpark, and now it's going to be C.J. Crone. The right-hander back to work. Left field. Canna makes the grab. One pitch and one out. Up next for Colorado. Randall oh, Gritchick here. now. Randall. Gritchick. A wind in the pitch. And there's a breaking ball that drops in there. That big curve inside is a pitch that can buckle you a little bit. Looks like a fastball out of hand and then just drops over that inside part of the plate. And yeah, the right-hander deals. And down on strikes he goes. And there's two down. Well, clearly just anxious right there, and understandably so. In an 0-2 count, you feel like you've got a lot of plate to cover, and you don't want to strike out, and you end up striking out. That's just one of those pitches where it's not over the plate, but because you committed to it as it was leaving his hand, by the time you realized it wasn't going to be in the zone, it's too late to hold up your swing. Ryan McMahon steps to the plate. And he swings and misses at the initial offering. Next offering is fouled back. The 0-2. Stays alive. Here's the 0-2. Swag and a miss. The velocity blasted it right past him. One, two, three, go the Rockies. But they're on top, one nothing. Back here in Denver, now it's Brendan Rodgers. Taken high in the draft, he's had that top prospect label over him since he put on a professional uniform. But at some point, that starts to go away, and you've got to produce at the big league level. Strike on the outside corner. Strike one. 0-2 oh, as he waves at that one. Right 
And it's fouled away. Next oh, one misses. Fly. It's a ball and two strikes. Swing and a miss, and he got him. Picks up strikeout number seven. Typically, that high fastball, if it's now close back. to the top of the strike zone, a hitter, if he's prepared for it, can get to it. But that one just had that little jump at the end, which indicates there's a good spin rate on it, and it didn't decrease in velocity as that hitter's internal clock would expect it to, and that's why you see the swing and miss. And here is Sam Hillier. Swings and fouls one off. That fastball at the bottom of the zone can be very effective. Just got to keep Here it on the go. corners. One down, base is empty. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Pitcher having a pretty tough time getting that swing and miss. Third foul ball in a row. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And now two gone. You hear people talk about letting the ball travel so often in terms of a hitting approach, and that's a great example why right there. If he's willing to let that curveball get a little deeper into the zone before he commits, he's way more likely to recognize that it's making a beeline for the dirt. On the other side, still a nice two-strike pitch, though. Digging in, Dom Nunez. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. Well, on the mound, very efficient, able to produce an outcome, it seems like, within the third or fourth pitch of just about every at-bat. Popped up, foul territory behind the plate. Squeezes it. That is the inning. Five innings complete. It's the Rockies one and the Mets nothing. Bottom of the six, and the batter will be the shortstop, Jose Iglesias. The shortstop, Jose Yamamoto back to work. And there's the strike. Next pitch misses inside, and the count is one and one. Check swing, went around, one and two. Stays alive. Here we go, guys. Let's go. The wide to kick the pitch. And that one fouled off. Well, you put good velocity in the head of the hitter. He's got to get it ready early and then change speeds. Keep him off balance. That's the goal. Got him. And that's the first out. Thought it was a pretty good pitch. Top of the strike zone. We're seeing more fastballs in that now location. Back. Hitters, especially with two strikes, have to be ready to pull the trigger. Next for the Rockies is the DH, Charlie Blackman. Two for ten in the series. Next offering is down low. One and oh. Next offering is in for a strike. And one and two. Boog, that hook's looking pretty sharp today. Just a solid pitching performance so far, and I really think it's because of that curveball. Up, up, up. Next pitch has popped it, up. Escobar makes the play, and there are two outs. Now no left field. Here's Chris Bryant there now. The wind of the pitch. That's in there. Strike one. No, oh, he's got to be pretty proud of this outing so far. Sometimes guys cower coming into a ballpark like this, but he is attacked hitters. Pitching on the road like this is very impressive. This has been a treat to watch. Hey, just you and him. Damn yourself. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. Nothing doing for the Rockies, but they lead it one to nothing. Welcome back. Set for the last half of the seventh. And here's the first baseman, C.J. Crone. The first baseman. The wind of the pitch. There's a strike. Hey, no outs here. 
And he's down 0-2 as he swings through it. It's just been an impressive outing so far. Continues to pound the zone pitch after pitch. And he's been able to stay down. That's what's been key. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. One away. Well, that event seemed to be over as soon as it started. Three-pitch strikeout. You've got to be better at the plate right there, at least to foul something off, extend that at bat. Randall Gritchick now. And here it comes. That pitch gets the inside corner. It's 0-1. Plays it first now. Oh, and two now. And a foul ball. He stays alive. Hey, one away, one away. The 0 2. Ground ball to the right side. Could be extra bases. Around first, heading for two. And that's going to kick into the corner. Not stopping. He's going for three. In there safely. Runner at third with one gone. So in now for Colorado, Ryan McMahon. In the infield at the corners, don't be surprised to see them come home first and prevent that. So one out with two aboard. Here's the second baseman, Brendan Rogers. And he deals. And that's a strike. Don't be surprised to ball on the ground to the corners that they come home with the baseball instead of going to first base. Next one off the plate inside. And now it's even one and one. Next offering upstairs. That's a really good take. The punch out there. So he's gotten deep into this game, and at least so far, not showing a ton of signs of fatigue. Sam Hillier digging in for the Rockies. One for two. And he swings and misses, and it's nothing at one. Looking for some insurance. Or as our friends down in the South would say, insurance. No matter how you say it, we know what you mean. Hey, Corners are occupied with two down. So now one and two. Man, he was really tardy on that fastball. Great job of setting him up by throwing the curveball. Add some velocity to it on the next pitch. Can't catch up. Marte sizes this one up, and the inning is over. Two left for Colorado. They lead it one nothing. And welcome back. And now it's Dom Nunez. Well, after putting up a nice inning on offense, got some runs across, this is where you look for the starter to go out there, have a shutdown inning. Don't give that other team any hope. Uh, you just hope that he can get through this inning, get the bats back up there while they're hot. That one down the line, and that's just foul. Well, they kept him pretty quiet in this series. Still doesn't have a knock. I know... You want to get that first knock out of the way. Maybe more will come, but you got to give some credit to the pitching staff. They've had a great plan against him. He'll do it himself, and that's one away as the leadoff man is out in the eighth. So the batting order turns over. Jose Iglesias digging in for the Rockies. The pitch. On the ground to the left. Guillaume to first. And a couple of quick outs. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Let's the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. Two outs, base is empty. Here's Chuck Nasty. And the right hater back to work. And that one pulled foul. Oh, one down. Edge of the zone, called a strike, and it's 0-2. And the righty deals. Stays alive. 
Well, the hitter's got his timing down for the breaking ball. If you're a pitcher, if you can get that fastball in on the hand, it's going to be very difficult for that hitter. And down on strikes. And that'll do it. Rockies are down quietly. And it remains a 3-1 ball game. Back now and on the mound, the closer, Edwin Diaz. And he'll do his best to hang on to this lead. Singy, they called him up with the hopes he'd be a force on the mound, and he delivered today. Double-digit punch-outs and just a great game overall. No doubt about it, Boog. And he seems to be the kind of young pitcher who can completely change the story of a season. And I know that sounds like we're putting a lot of pressure on him, but he showed terrific stuff out there on the mound in this one and maybe a sign of good things to come down the road as well.